All right, let's set up the AxeFX3 so that we can send a DI to front of house with cabinet simulations on, as well as a signal to a power amp and a guitar cabinet, which does not feature coloration by the cab sim. So this is pretty easy to set up. First, we need to set up the amp and the cab for the front of house signal. This is gonna be using input one, where my guitar's plugged in, and output one, the main output. So let's choose an amp. In this case, I'm going to go with the, well, there it is, the Atomica High. This amp sounds great at stock settings, so I will use this for all the examples. And then what I'm going to do is place a cab block at the end of the chain. The reason being that we're going to have to branch off a parallel chain here. And if I want effects that happen after my amp, normally reverb and delay, then I want those also to go to my onstage cab and front of house. So we'll get to that in a second. I'm just gonna pick a cab. One of my favorite factory cabs is in factory number two. Uh, you can easily search for these as you can see. Hit YA and it brings up the York audio impulses. I'm gonna go with this 57MD, which is a, uh, I believe a Mesa 4x12 with V30s. It sounds really great with the Atomica. <laughs> Sounds like rock music. I like that a lot. So this is strategy number one. Let's add some effects now. We're just going to go with, ah, oh, why not? I'm on the chorus. So let's choose the new tri-chorus, which I really like the sound of. I'm going to set the mix to 50% there just to lessen everything. Sounds like so. <laughs> Nice and 80s sounding. And then let's add a delay block there. Say we wanted to just have a quick mono delay. I'll leave it right there, 500 milliseconds. That's pretty cool. What we want to do, if we want a DI signal to front of house, we've now got it out of output one. Let's branch off a parallel row. So this is after the time base effects, but before the cab. I'm going to send that to output number three. Why not output number two, you ask? Well, output number three is a quarter inch output. And I figure most of you guys aren't lugging around an extra XLR to run to a guitar amp head or a dedicated power amp and guitar cab. So I like output number three simply for the fact that I can easily connect a uh, quarter inch cable, which I've normally got. And that is it. That's the setup. I can send this to my power amp. I have a Matrix GT8 100 effects, I think. Yeah, that's the model number. And then a Mesa 212 that I use for gigs where basically uh, there's really bad monitoring. Most of the time I just run direct to front of house and use the in-house monitors, but uh, I do need to run a cab sometimes. So this is how I do it. Now, if you wanna fine tune your sound uh, for your cab without affecting the front of house sound, what you can do is branch off straight from input number one. So this is gonna be the second way to do this. And I'm gonna delete this row here and I'm going to basically connect these two up. So what I'm now doing is sending a guitar signal to output three. And what I can do is copy these blocks here and paste them into this complete parallel row. So all the effects are gonna sound the same, except obviously there's gonna be no cab block. So I can go through and do that with the chorus, do that with the delay as well and they will sound exactly the same, which is pretty cool. Very uh, quick and easy way without dialing up blocks and tweaking them. So what we've got now is input one goes through output one and that goes to front of house. And then in this row here, I've got exactly the same signal chain just without the cab. And that is going to my real power amp and my real cab, which is obviously a little bit more CPU heavy because we're running two amps. But if you're using a tube power amp, this is 100% the way to do it because in this amp block, you can go to the power supply section, turn the supply sag to zero and turn the Axe FX3 power amp modeling off. That way, you're not like doubling up on tube power amp color. This is just gonna act as a preamp. You can send it to your tube power amp to color the sound and into your guitar speakers and then everything's gonna be hunky-dory. Furthermore, if you wanna tweak your uh, amp and cab sound without affecting the DI sound to front of house, you can just tweak this amp here and the sound guy is not gonna have anything changing during the gig. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this setup is really good for fly gigs or if you're on tour and you're using backline. A lot of the time backline is like, you know, 
it's something like a Marshall JCM 900 or it's an AC30 or it's a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. If you're lucky, you've got just an effects return to plug into. And in this case, this would be the way to run that. So there you go, two different ways to run your Axe FX3 as something that can be sent to front of house with cab simulation and to a dedicated power amp and cabinet at the same time without the cab sims on uh, to use in a live setting. I guess this works when you're recording as well, you know, if you wanted an extra flavor with the DI and then you could send this out to a cab that you're miking up in a real studio. That's a pretty labor intensive way to do it, but I'm sure there are lots of cool creative tones you could get out of it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the subscribe button and there's gonna be a lot more of these coming your way soon. So thanks for tuning in.